verse number 13, brothers, that's Philippians 3.13, brothers, sisters, I don't count myself to hold, have, have laid hold of it yet. But only this, I'm forgetting what's behind me. Hello, somebody. I am forgetting what is behind, and I'm reaching out for what is ahead. I'm pressing toward the mark, the goal of the prize of the upward calling of the Messiah. I want to be in him. So I'm pressing. So what am I doing? Everything somebody did to me, said to me, and tried to hurt me with, I'm forgetting it. That's my past, not my present. And I'm looking for my future. Hallelujah. And my future is not on earth. My future is in the kingdom. And that's what I'm pressing toward. Anybody pressing? So you got to tell that thing trying to get you to move out of my way. Don't try to stop me. Then over there in Matthew 5, 48, he says it again. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. So you think he meant it? He said it three times. Be perfect, be perfect, be perfect, be holy, be holy, be holy. Because I want y'all to be just like me. Anybody here want a child that's not like you? Well, y'all got quiet that time. You should see something of you in your children. Come on. See, we, we need to get ourselves right with the Father so we can get right with one another. What good is it for me to live a perfect life with no friends when the crowd talking about me, when everything going on with me just like it's going on with the sinner? He rained on me, ran on the sinner. Sinners got more money than me in some cases, riding better cars than me. What does it profit me to live a perfect life? Got the answer for you. That answer is in uh, Tehillim, that's Psalms 119. See, that's a, that's a very beautiful psalm, longest one in the book. 119. And guess where we're going to go? Verse 1. And it says, Aleph. Now, we've been taught that Aleph is the first alphabet in the Hebrew language. I've been taught that maybe that's wrong by translators, but I ain't getting into that. But Aleph, blessed are the perfect in the way. What do, what do they walk in? They walk in the Torah of Yah. So if you're walking in the Torah, you're walking in the first five books. Well, let's stick with the word. The word says you're walking in the Torah. That is the word. Straight out of Yah. And if you walk in Torah, you're walking enough. You don't have to walk in the prophets. The prophets telling you about stuff that happened during that era. But you got to walk in Torah because that's the word of Yah to us. Huh? That's how you become a prophet, by walking Torah. You become obedient by walking Torah. You show you love Yah by walking Torah. Are y'all still with me? Blessed? How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all are blessed? Hallelujah. See, I listened to my son over there today. That's a blessed man. That's why you're here today. See, when the Father then showed out for you, you ought to be the one busting the doors down just to give him some more praise. I heard that we said, that we said, I'm going to praise you in the midst of the great sanctuary. In other words, I'm going to come in there, I'm going to act up. And then his wife said, look at you out here dancing all out your clothes and stuff and got the maidens looking on you out of your clothes and stuff like that. What's wrong with you? He said, hold on, baby. Do you see what's right here? I 
I got the ark taking it home. Every six steps, I'm taking a dance, a dance break. And you think it's strange because I'm a king that I'm supposed to act all proper and politically correct? We got the ark. No, that's how kings act. I'm a king of Yah. Chosen by Yah. When I was a boy, he anointed me. I took that anointment and I killed Goliath. I ran from Saul, could have killed him three times and didn't do it, even though he wanted to kill me. And then I was chosen after his demise to be a king by him to take Saul's place. And you think you haven't got the right mind to know that I'm going to give him true praise? I got the Ark of the Covenant in my possession. Nobody can beat me. Every time I go to fight, I win. And the ark was in Obed Edom's house and he was getting blessed. Oh no, I've got the ark back. <laughs> but I tell you what, Michal, I tell you what, Michal, if you think I act bad today, see tomorrow, I'm going to act a little bit worse because I'm going to be closer to the kingdom. Come on here, somebody. See, we should be acting bad up in here. Why? Because we got the ark down on the inside. We got the, oh, we got, come on, somebody. We got the rod of Aaron. We got the manna. We got the book. We got the words. We got all of that down on the inside. We ought to be acting bad. I'm sitting down trying to look all proper and dignified. came here with your hair all nice and your mascara on just right. Everything in place. And then you want to leave like that. The father said, oh no. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't let you put all that on to come here and go back home with it. I'm going to shake up your world a little bit. I'm going to give you a reason to jump up and run. I'm going to let you know I'm still here and I want my praise from you. Why? Because I inhabit the praise of my people. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, let's give him a praise because we want him in the house. Well, wait, 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 but brother, you done, you done jumped all around about perfection and this, and you done came from Peter, you done, you done went to Dawid, and, and, and you done went to Matthew and all of them. And what about in the first book? What you talking about, Better Sheet? Yeah, what about in that book? Well, let's go look at Better Sheet, Genesis chapter 17. He was talking to his, his friend called Abram. He was talking to him. He told him, Genesis, Genesis 17, verse 1. And it says, and it came to be when Abram was 99 years old. How old? That Almighty Yah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. When did he do that? 99 years old. And some of us think we got enough at 29. I don't know about y'all. How many of y'all feel like me and you want some more? I want some more. That's why I'm here today. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm standing up here teaching, but you know what? The teacher being taught. Hallelujah. That's why when y'all don't shout and y'all see me up here cutting up, don't mind me. Just sit right there. I'll be a display for you. I'm going to show you that I'm glad to be saved in the house of Almighty Yah. I'm glad to be right here, right now, doing what I'm doing. And as he's speaking to me, I'm speaking to you. I'm learning, and you are learning. But if you don't feel good about what you're learning, just sit right there. But if you see me shouting, don't laugh at me. Don't talk about me. Just say, ooh, look at him. <laughs> I don't know why he cutting up like that. Well, after the message, just come talk to me. I tell you. <laughs> Just come talk to me. 
Hallelujah. The other day I'm sitting there, I'm out there in my yard and everything, and you know, I hadn't seen my children in a while, and all of a sudden I get a phone call, Daddy, we'd be at the house in a few minutes. There come my daughters and my grand, my grandsons, and now I got a great grandchild, and all of them pile up in the house. I got something to shout about. I don't know about y'all parents, but see, this parent right here, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> I'm not in the loop like I want to be. See, because I'm in the loop of Yah. So when you get into the loop of Yah, you're out of the loop of man. So if you're not in Yah, then you out of the loop with me. Because I ain't coming out of mine to get yours. Hell, I done been in there. Been there, done that. This one I'm in right now, I'm going down a rabbit hole, don't know where it's going to end. But I know when I do come out, when I see him, I will be like him. Oh, come on, somebody. Woo! Praise his Kodesh name. Is he talking to you today? First John chapter 3, verse number 2. Look what he says, beloved ones. That's you, right? Now we are children of Elohim. Somebody say right now. And it has not yet been revealed what we will be. But we know, how many of y'all know, that when he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And everyone having this hope, this expectation, in him you are as pure as he's pure. Wait, wait, hold on, brother preacher. Hold on. Did your book just say that? If you have this hope in you, then you are pure as he is pure. My goodness. Come on, worms. Come on, worms. <laughs> Y'all don't want some of this purity. Huh? He cleansed you. You didn't cleanse you. you don't, I'm going to tell you all something that you might not know. You don't know what clean is. The only clean you know is dial, ivory, and, and, and dove. <laughs> That's the only clean you know. Dial, ivory, and dove. Now we even got a little bit better. Now we go with dawn. And we think when we wash up with that stuff, it takes all the impurities off of us. We don't know clean. We don't know clean. See, we, we judge clean. We judge clean according to man's terms. We see clean from the way men see clean. But the father said, if you have this hope. Y'all heard me? The father said, if y'all have this hope, then you are pure. Even as purity. Now, how many of us really understand that purity? I'm going to tell you right now, you don't know how pure you are. Worms in the cocoon. <laughs> See? Because you figure since I'm still in the cocoon, I ain't no good, I ain't this, not that. Well, guess what? Wherever, wherever you are, he is there. If he has you in his hands, you must be clean enough to be there. I'm going to get you excited somewhere along the line, the father said, because I want you to understand, if, 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 if you are in my hand, 